everybody telling the other here, obviously. Now today I want to talk about something that I usually don't get into on this channel, and that's the topic of racism. Normally I don't find that interesting, I find it tedious, but today it has my full attention. So let's get into it. I expect to find racism in people who have a narrow life experience or a narrow educational um, background. And by educational, I mean, you know, your actual formal education plus traveling and living and working in the world. I particularly don't expect to find uh, highly racist or shockingly bigoted um, attitudes and beliefs in people who are cosmopolitan, who are very well educated, who are, you know, at the higher levels of the economic strata of society. Uh, for example, you know, a Toronto lawyer with a really excellent education, a guy like David Butt, right? That guy's not stupid. He's very smart, very well educated, and rich by you, your and my standards. Uh, and yet, I'm going to read you a couple paragraphs from an article that he wrote um, at the Globe and Mail. According to the time that I record this, he wrote this or published it 15 hours ago. So it's, you know, one day old article. How the justice system let race taint the Stanley verdict. Gerald Stanley was found not guilty of murdering Colton Bushy. He testified that the gun went off accidentally and the jury believed him, or at least had a reasonable doubt about accidental discharge. So far, nothing problematic. Typical courtroom stuff. That's the first paragraph. Okay? It's obviously a setup for a switch o change -o. The next sentence, standing alone. Now let's add a couple of key truths. Well, I don't like the word truths there because it has a sort of religious tone to it, doesn't it? Next paragraph. Gerald Stanley, comma, a white man, comma, was found not guilty of murdering Colton Bushy, comma, a young indigenous man, comma, by a white jury, period. Now, David Butt, the lawyer, the lawyer who wrote this, the highly educated, cosmopolitan, high, highly intelligent, highly accomplished Toronto lawyer who wrote this, later details in this article that on the basis of the evidence in this particular article with this disgusting opening, actually goes on to say that the jury's verdict of not guilty is a correct and proper legal outcome. Now, you could also have an outcome that they found him guilty. They could decide that the evidence was not credible or that for what other other reasons they, they decided he was guilty. So David Butt, the author of this article, points out, and I'll link to it, that this was a correct verdict. But I'm going to read a little farther on. Uh, next sentence after Indigenous Man by a White Jury. He says, suddenly sounds ominously different, doesn't it? Well, only if you're a racist, because I had read through all of the, the, the court reporting, all the journalism surrounding this case, and there was almost nothing about the race of the two participants in this lethal uh, encounter. Now, obviously, there's lots of um, agitation and protest about the race of the farmer and the, the ethnicity of the, the native kid who got shot. But that's just a bunch of outside commentary on the trial. The trial itself is about a kid trying to rob a farmer, and it doesn't matter what color they are. Oh yeah, and the picture on your screen is the rifle that the kid had with him, so we can dispense with him being not armed, too. Thank you. Uh, there was evidence about the drinking, there was evidence about the state of the truck, the broken tire, the, the rifle butt that the kid had that he used to try to smash a truck, uh, the, the ramming his gray SUV into a parked vehicle, the fear that the farmer had that his wife was underneath that parked vehicle, and so on and so forth. Nothing about, oh, he was a native kid, and I'm a white guy, I gotta kill him. No, nothing like that. So the racist element here is being injected by David Butt. Ironically, Mr. Stanley's evidence, that's the farmer, if believed, is certainly enough to earn him an acquittal. So the jury might have done the right thing and reached a just result. But because of the racial dynamics, the verdict, whether right or wrong, is incurably tainted. Excuse me, what? But because of the racial dynamics, the verdict, whether right or wrong, is incurably tainted. The only racial dynamics in this trial are being put on it by commentators. 
How did this miscarriage of justice happen? He goes from the evidence is certainly enough to earn him an acquittal to the opening of the next paragraph, how did this miscarriage of justice happen? So we have him narratively adding racism to this case. Well, this is called race baiting. That's what this article, David Butt, is shamefully and I mean, it's beyond disgusting. And it's not like David Butt is some hillbilly, uneducated, inexperienced, narrow-thinking, 1970s cartoon of a southern cracker racist. David Butt is a Toronto lawyer with a very good education, great intelligence, great experience. Uh, And so I don't think David Butt is actually some sort of pathetic cartoon of a racist white man, I think he is cynically exploiting that 1970s cartoon idea of a hackneyed old racist from a a 1980s or 1970s movie. He's exploiting that imaginary racist that is in all of our our minds. David Butt is cynically exploiting our, our stereotype of what racism is to inject conflict to inject race baiting into this trial which is actually worse than David Butt just being a straight up ignorant racist and so I'm going to go from this back to the justice minister's tweet that she responded to Justin Trudeau with she says thank you PM Justin Trudeau my thoughts are with the family of Colton Bushy tonight I truly feel your pain and I hear all your voices As a country, we can and must do better. I am committed to working every day to ensure justice for all Canadians. As a country, we can and must do better. Now, yesterday I recorded a video and uploaded it where I talked about that statement. As a country, we can and must do better. Where she's attacking the decision of a jury in a completed criminal trial. The justice minister, the person in charge of the courts, is attacking the decision of a jury in a completed trial. That's bad enough. Let's take that comment by the Justice Minister and look at it with a different interpretation. Okay, well, Colton Bushy, the kid who ended up drunk driving around in the semi-wrecked vehicle trying to jack a a truck from another farm and then coming to uh, Gerald Stanley's farm and unsuccessfully trying to steal an ATV and getting shot in the process and getting killed with his friends, armed, drunk, rampaging around. I talked about his family yesterday and the the values that led to him basically enacting this fatal misadventure. He lives on a reserve, or he lived on a reserve. That's where he started his day out. And we know that the, the reserve system in Canada produces poverty, lower life expectancy. We have all these social problems emerging from this special system that we have. I mean, like, we have all these special provisions within Canada, and why do we do that? On the surface level, as a culture, we're trying to uh, make life better for natives, because they were here before we were, uh, presumably, and not very well thought out idea that, and now there's this class guilt, right? The, Western liberal white middle class people feel this kind of class guilt about things that happened many generations ago and so we enact in our laws and in our economic system and in our tax system and in our education system all these special provisions well forget about all those reasons and let's just look at the results we have uh, generation after generation growing up on reserves in poverty with with um, shorter life expectancy, uh, lesser expectancy of lifetime earnings, uh, alcohol and drug addiction. Uh, We actually have a criminal sentencing discount for natives, and yet we have all these continuing problems. So uh, how about we stop doing that, hey? How about we stop having a separate set of rules and standards for one group of people because clearly what it's producing is poverty and negative outcomes. I mean, we have this kind of silly, stupid idea that, oh, we do all these things for natives and we're trying to help them. No, what we're doing is holding them down. 
We are, as a culture, looking at natives. So we're going to create this lowered set of standards and all these little special advantages and, and economic and sentencing discounts and so on. And at a one-to-one -one level, if you have two individual people competing and you give advantages to one of them, yeah, the guy with the advantages is going to come out ahead. But when you do it as a class, when you do it for an entire entire cultural group of people that's within your main society, you're sending this very loud message to their children that that they are inferior. You're conveying to them through this system-wide, this society-wide thousand decibel message that gets right into their bones that they're inferior, that they can't actually stand up on their own two feet without all these special little rules. Well, what is what do you think that does to somebody? It cripples them. We're in fact keeping them in this state of perpetual distress. So how about this? We get rid of status. We phase it out. We phase out the reserves. As long as we keep perpetuating this idea that they must have all these special benefits, special little provisions within the system of our, of our laws and our culture and our economic system and so on. So let's look at that statement. As a country, we can and we must do better. Yeah, stop treating them like retards. As ever, thanks very much for watching. Um, and you may, at the end of this video, want to lynch me or you might want to subscribe to my Patreon in either of those two cases. The first case I live in East Vancouver or uh, the Patreon link is in the lower. Thanks for watching and have a lovely, lovely day.